Less than three years ago, South Carolina finished at 9-4, and four, won the Outback Bowl against Michigan. That was the high point for Will Muschamp, and it's all been downhill ever since. We got uh, Will Gunter on the line from 107.5, the all-new early game. Will, another Will out of a job. Hopefully you're doing well. I'm doing well. I'm doing well, and, and at least as of uh, as of 4.50 on Monday – Afternoon, I'm still employed. Uh, so you know, uh, six a.m. comes early though. So we'll we'll see. We're we're we, we got to get through Tuesday morning, then fight the Wednesday morning, fight the good fight, and keep going. But uh, yeah, at least I'm I'm a busy day. That's for sure. Busy last uh, do math real quick. Last uh, about twenty twenty hours. Busy last about twenty two hours. So folks, uh, will works as I said at uh, the game one hundred seven point five. The game Columbia South Carolina. So Columbia, South Carolina, you know he's right in the midst of all this. And I know what it's like following the beat of uh, coaching controversies, coaching searches, and so forth. So, yes, it's a endless cycle of uh, rumors and trying to chase down candidates and all that other business. So let's get back to Will Muschamp before we move on to possible candidates. There was conventional wisdom out there that because of COVID wreaking havoc with, havoc with the college football season, that most coaches or maybe all coaches would be safe with the leniency of no spring practice, summer workouts compromised, late season, short season, especially a first year head coach, of course, but he's been around a while. Uh, so were you a bit surprised that uh, he was let go at this point? Uh, yes and no. I, I, the answer is no, uh, because things really, really escalated the last two weeks after uh, South Carolina was beaten 48 to three by Texas A&M. I, I think if you'd ask me, even after South Carolina lost to LSU uh, 52 to 24, I, I thought that he would make it through the season. But I was there uh, two week two weeks ago on a Saturday night, and and it was such an uninspiring effort. It really was so poor coming off of a bye week. Uh, it was it was not good, and that changed a lot of things for Will Muschamp. I think he could have gone two and eight. I really do. I think he could have gone two and eight, but it had to be been somewhat competitive in that game. And you know, even Saturday night, uh, you know, they do score forty two points. Um, but it, the the what had happened over the last three weeks after they beat Auburn, uh, after they beat Auburn, what had happened finally became too much to bear, and I think. The administration had to take into account what the fans' attitude was, and it was unified that they wanted this guy gone. Unfortunately, so to answer your question, probably you know two or three weeks ago, uh, three weeks ago, four weeks ago, yeah, I would have been surprised. I thought he would have been fine, but after that Texas A&M game uh, on November seventh, I, I felt that it was a more of a matter of time than than if it was going to happen this year. Six and 14 in his last 20 games, uh, dating back to a shutout loss in the Belk Bowl against uh, Virginia a couple seasons ago. I mentioned the high water mark. It's difficult to win in the SEC. You can be recruiting in the top 25 like Will Muschamp has, even better than that, and uh, you can fall behind. So since that high water mark, when he had lifted this program from three wins to six to nine, what do you think went wrong after that? That's a great question. Um, I, I put on Twitter a little while ago. I don't know. It, it's been strange again about the last 22 hours to see everything that's happened. It seemed like there there wasn't a high expectation amongst players, maybe amongst staff. I, I've noticed former players that played under Steve Spurrier believe that this program can be more. It appeared that under Will Muschamp, and you've seen tweets come out in the last, few, uh, last several hours that players – Obviously, are upset. Understandably so. They believed in their coach, uh, former players Brian Edwards in the with the with the Las Vegas Raiders and Keyshawn Nixon, who I think is also with the Raiders. Some some other guys, some NFL guys. Uh, it, it seemed like there was a, a lack of of higher expectation. I I don't know. I, I say that I'm trying to think back now as it's been a hectic day. Uh, you think back over the last three or four years and and what we've seen. Uh, the offense is better this year, but defensively. They've collapsed. I mean, they've collapsed. They've they've given up 159 points in the last three games, and that's crazy for a for a guy who's a defensive guru. So I think it's it's a bunch of things that have accumulated, uh, really over three or four years. Yeah, and one of the concerning things against Texas A and M, you know, you go back. Will Muschamp defended his players after getting beat 48 to three, and he said, "Well, effort's not a problem. They played with great effort tonight." Well. 
you play with great effort and you get beat 48 to three, it's kind of an issue of talent or coaching then because if they're giving it all they got and they're still losing by 45 at home off a of bye week, it's not good. So I, I think it was a lot of things. I think it was a lot of things that ended up adding up. $13 million buyout. So you talked about, uh, you know, the possibility of any of us losing a job at any point, but uh, it kind of cushions the blow uh, for some of these guys that uh, get their walking papers at $13 million. So that's not too bad of a deal. Um, looking at the list of candidates, Hugh Freeze, Liberty. Now, from a football standpoint, that would seem to make a lot of sense. Uh, the SEC would not allow him to come back and coach at Alabama because of his uh, accusations, allegations that were all confirmed. And, of course, his uh, issues at Ole Miss. You got Billy Napier, Louisiana. We got uh, uh, the Coastal Carolina coach, Jimmy Chadwell. Shane Beamer's an Oklahoma assistant. Tony Elliott right there at Clemson. Any other names that are stirring up? Anybody that you think would be a really good get? Well, that's two different questions. I, I think, you know, who do I think would be a really good get? Um, you know, I, I mean, I, Urban Meyer, uh, Bob Stoops, that's not going to happen. Uh, realistically, the the list right now from, from my uh, interactions over the last 20 hours uh, I think it starts with with Shane Beamer and Billy Napier. Those are the two guys. I, I don't think it'll get past those two guys. They, they're for different reasons. I think they're they're interesting hires. I think the important thing out there is even I think the best coach to hire. The best coach is Hugh Freeze. I don't think they'll do that. I don't know if they will have a conversation with him. I don't know if they'll interview him and and have to make that decision is he is he uh capable of running an sec program again I, I do think that if you wanted to hire the best guy who's realistic and that that's important is realistic uh i think hugh freeze would be the guy but knowing south carolina's administration uh general robert caslin is the president he comes from west point uh, uh there's going to be a hire i think I, I don't think that they'll do that i don't think that they'll hire hugh freeze i think it would be a home run hire uh, I don't think it – look, I, I don't think Hugh Freeze would would do some of the things he did at Mississippi, both personally and and uh, in the football office in terms of, of recruiting players. But I, I think he would be a good hire. I, I just don't think it will happen. I do think it will come down to Billy Napier, who's at Louisiana Lafayette, who has ties, who's coached. Uh, this is his third year at Lafayette. has certainly done some good things. Uh, he's been around the Southeastern Conference at Alabama. He's been in the state of South Carolina, both as a player at uh, Furman University in the upstate and as a uh, offensive coordinator under Davo Sweeney at Clemson. Uh, he's got a good track record. Uh, there's a lot of rumors that are a lot, at least a lot of people who, who, who I believe who've told me that he last year turned down Mississippi State and Arkansas because he felt this job would come open. Uh, he feels a little jaded. Uh, after what happened at Clemson with Dabo Sweeney. So I think he would be a very interesting hire. Uh, I really like Shane Beamer. I think South Carolina has got a lot of things that make it an attractive job, but I think that there are issues as well that coaches do not realize. Financially, recruiting, uh, dealing with the board of trustees, dealing with expectations. I think there are a lot of things that people don't realize uh, when they take the job and then, you know, you find out year or two in and, and you realize how difficult the job can be. And I say that because Shane Beamer has been an assistant here. He was here under Steve Spurrier, uh, even though he's never been an offensive or defensive coordinator, has no head coaching experience. I think that he would put together a really good staff. He understands the state. He understands the division, uh, the SEC Eastern Division. He understands the conference. Uh, he understands and has seen the formula that Steve Spurrier used when South Carolina was at their best. I, I think those are the two guys you mentioned, Jamie Chadwell, his name is being uh, rumored. I think he's, he's probably third or fourth on the list. One name you didn't mention that I think you keep an eye on is Steve Sarkeesian, the Alabama offensive coordinator. He's been mentioned prominently uh, that he won't see it back into being a head coach. It's not a guy that I would be a big fan of. I don't like taking guys from Alabama where you're working with inferior talent uh, Jalen Waddle is the fastest, best receiver in college football. I know he's injured, but he certainly makes people look good. Uh, Mac Jones, Tua last year, Najee Harris. I, it's just I, 
you don't have that in South Carolina. So I, I think you've got to go with a guy like Napier, a guy like Beamer. Again, Jamie Chadwell's interesting. Uh, Will Healy is an outside name, uh, dark horse, if they get down past a couple names that is at uh, Charlotte that's that's done some nice things. But I, I really think as of today, as we sit here less than 24 hours removed from uh, the dismissal of Will Muschamp, that it will end up being uh, Shane Beam or Billy Napier, barring uh, Hugh Freeze blowing them away in an interview process or or the university feeling that he has uh, has changed some of his habits. Offensive coordinator Mike Bobo runs the show for the rest of this season. He, of course, has a pretty high-level experience at Colorado State, not the Power Five, but the Mountain West team. So do you think he has any kind of a shot? I, I do. Um, again, I, I think if Mike Bobo – look, I, I, from what I gather, Billy Napier or Shane Beamer are not going to say no. Um, I, I know I know Shane Beamer wants the job. Uh, Billy Napier, I'm told, wants the job. So what I'm about to say kind of contradicts the fact that I think he, that Mike Bobo has a shot. I, I don't think it will get past those two guys. And I think Mike Bobo is, is further down the list. If he goes out – and hypothetically beats, they've got Missouri, Georgia, and Kentucky are the next three games. And, and you can go to a bowl. You can go to a bowl. They can go to a bowl at two and eight, uh, the way the NCAA is set up. Uh, if Mike Bobo were to go out and win those three games and maybe get the bowl opportunity, which means you have to extend the coaching search into January, let's say he wins those things by like a combined 180 to 30. Well, then, then all of a sudden it's so impressive, maybe you have to consider him. I think people want a break uh, at, at the head coaching position. I think they want a break from the Will Muschamp era. I, I think Mike Bobo would be accepted as an offensive coordinator because he has done some good things this week or this year. And he's got a commitment. South Carolina's got a commitment from a five-star quarterback in the 2021, 2022 class, excuse me, the next class in Gunnar Stockton, who is one of the top quarterbacks in the nation, has ties to Mike Bobo's family. He is committed to South Carolina. Uh, he's not committed to the university. He's committed to the coach, to Mike Bobo. If Mike Bobo is not here, the general feeling is that Gunnar Stockton will not come to South Carolina. I, I don't know how true that is, but I think a lot of people would be okay with Mike Bobo being retained as the offensive coordinator. There's not going to be a lot of happy people, I think, that if uh, Mike Bobo ends up being the full-time head coach. Will, last question. You know the fan base. You take calls every day. You're ingrained. the The amount of support it's a rabid fan base, packed house all the time. They have to be down in the dumps to have empty seats. But it's it's beyond the Vandys and the Missouris and the Kentuckys when it comes to support. It's right at the top of the list. If you look at college football and look at underachievers over the last ten years, you're going to go right to Texas, USC to a certain extent, Miami. But if you look at college football history, South Carolina has never really won big. Spurrier had the three 11 win seasons. That's big, finishing in the top five. But competing for championships, that hasn't happened there. And I just got to think that it could happen there, that they're, they're, the players are in the region and the resources and the facilities and the, the fan base and, and the interest is there, that somebody could go in there and it's, it's somewhat of a sleeping giant. Yeah, I, the question, the, the bigger question becomes, can you turn around a college football program in 2020? Uh, last year I watched, uh, I thought it was one of the best documentaries I ever watched, the Saturdays in the South that uh, the SEC Network did. And it made me realize even for a school like a Mississippi or a Kentucky, uh, programs that are not powerhouses, how much tradition they've had in their past being in the sec these moments you, you got the archie manning or you had bear bryant at kentucky and you, you got all these neat stories i watched and south Carolina doesn't have that uh they don't have uh they got they do have a great fan base i don't think they have a fan base that knows how to win uh i, I think what the, the perfect example of what i'm talking about when i talk about tradition is having expectations uh, Steve Spurrier came in and changed the mindset and the mentality of the South Carolina fan base to, hey, we can win. We saw it. We watched it. We we saw uh, South Carolina be competitive with the best teams in the country and finish in the top five. 
And I, I don't think you see that. I didn't. I don't think you see that under Will. Or you didn't see it under Will Muschamp. You didn't see that mentality. You got to have a guy who comes in and basically says, "Look, hard work. It's great, but we can be competitive." Uh, a couple weeks ago, I compared. I was talking about the Texas A&M game. So, uh, in Steve Spurrier's second year, Auburn came into town and was ranked number two in the country. Had uh, Kenny Irons was the running back. They were number two. And they ended up beating South Carolina 24 to 17. South Carolina dropped a touchdown pass over the middle that would have tied the game late in the ball game. And as the players walked off the field, they walked to their tunnel where they go into the locker room. Fans gathered at that tunnel and clapped. They clapped and they were they were excited. And they, you know, hey, our team was competitive with the number two team in the country. We took them late into the fourth quarter, and we almost beat them, and we clapped. Great effort, guys. And Steve Spurrier goes to the podium that night and goes, don't ever clap again for a loser. We lost the game. You don't clap for losers. Good effort means nothing uh, when you lose the football game. And I cycle back to two weeks ago, and South Carolina gets beat 48-3, to three, and nobody claps because it's 48-3. to three. And Will Muschamp goes in and goes, oh, they played really hard. Effort wasn't the problem. There's your difference in mindset from, from a championship coach to, to whatever happened uh, here in the last few years. Uh, is it a sleeping giant? I don't know. There's a lot of positives, obviously, about this job. The facilities are top of the line. The fan base is incredible. The stadium continues to have upgrades. It's in a great recruiting footprint. But you need a guy who comes in, and that's kind of why I like Shane Beamer, uh, because of that mentality. But you need a guy who comes in and says, you know, Florida, Georgia, be damned. We we can beat those guys. I'm not afraid of those guys. That was Steve Spurrier. Uh, and and we'll see if Billy Napier or Shane Beamer, those guys, if those are the two guys, one of those guys gets the job. But, uh, you know, can this team, can this program be more than it's been in the, in the course of history? Yes. Uh, they don't have the tradition, which is where I was going with that. They don't have some of the things that other programs have going for them. But can you turn a program around in 2020 in, in, the, in the landscape of college football now? Uh, we'll, we will once again embark on the quest to find out uh, over the next uh, five years. Uh, I took a joke from a commenter today because he figured Urban Meyer was right in line because if you get Spurrier, you get Muschamp, you get that Florida to South Carolina connection. Why not? Uh, people are terrified that they're going to jump Urban and go straight to Jim McElwain. <laughs> yeah. That's the, that's I did hear that one too. That's the fear. Will Gunter, 107.5. The game and his show is the all new early game. Will, I went straight to you, of course. South Carolina news had to go to the source. Appreciate it every time. Thank you so much, sir. Appreciate it. Next time I'll get a haircut. I feel like I'm looking at myself now. I look shaggy. So I, I appreciate it. Glad you're doing well. It's all good. It's it's what's inside here that we're looking Thank for. You. Thank you.